Welcome back to another field trips. My name is Ian Miller. Today we are gonna head up to a place called Kashmayari. I'm gonna stay at a little hut up there. Uh, if you saw the previous What's in My Bag video, you saw me pack the Explore 25. And I'm gonna bring that up there. I have about five to six hours of hiking. The first three is a really good steep punch. And then uh, the last couple hours to the hut, is a nice alpine ridge it's not exactly easy but it's not too challenging and then after i drop off gear at the hut i'm gonna head up to the summit which i think is about another hour uh if i recall correctly so hopefully i'll catch sunset up there it should be pretty beautiful i think uh, i'll go through what's in my bag later and uh, it's time to get on the trail Johnny! Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah. Hey. How are you? Hey. Good to see you. Where are you going? Tanuhiki? Ah, Kashimayari. Kashimayari? So, you are guiding. Oh, guiding. So, then, hello, thank you. 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 はい、はい、ジャニーさん。はい、カナダ人。はい、カナダ人。はい。ありがとうございます。はい、気をつけて。こんにちは。こんにちは。はい、カナダ人。ファイト。はい。こんにちは。楽しかった。Ooh. Well, it's definitely steep. Oh. I think I've only been going for 20 minutes now, but... So, so far I've been at it for an hour of 48 minutes, uh, just under four kilometers. Still quite a ways to go. Uh, you can kind of see the back ridge up there. Uh, that's just the ridge to get into the Alpine and then I've still got quite a hike after that. Uh, it's been nice though, getting a little cooler uh, in the forest. It was way too humid and hot, plus a steep hike, I basically soaked. Uh, shirt and shorts hopefully the sun comes out a bit up there and i can dry out a bit So it looks like I found myself a nice little place to take a rest. Uh, there's a little bit of a breeze, so hopefully some of the moisture gets blown out of my uh, shirt and shorts. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little snack. As you might have just saw, there had a little pizza shop there. 
Uh, it's part of a mountain hut, but uh, the last guy I got there, I kind of waited for about five minutes just to take a little photo of the pizza shop. And as it turned out, that guy uh, got the last pizza they had and uh, the smile on his face was pretty priceless. So I don't really have any uh, solid foods right now. Got some snack bars. One of these is gonna do the trick right now. And I'll pop a salt tablet. Uh, maybe two, put another one in my pocket for later. And I'm probably gonna throw this on after. Pizza sure look good though. Shoes are starting to feel a little swampy. Getting a little loose. Make sure they're nice and snug. These feet need to support my knees. My knees need to support my back. My backpacks on my back. Three hours, 25 minutes, six kilometers, almost seven kilometers. All right. And I'm gonna lather up with a little uh, sun cream. Yesterday, or not yesterday, a couple of days ago, I spent about two hours floating in the lake with my son, and I got really red. I did have I did have sunscreen on, but sometimes, you know, you spend two hours laying on your back and floating around a lake. You're gonna get sunburned. Hey, sorry to interrupt uh, the video, but from this point moving forward, there's gonna be a little awkward mark on my nose, and I just want you to know it's not snot, it's actually sunscreen. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Okay, so just in case. We get skunked on weather. Now you can see the summit in its fullest. The first peak there, that is the south peak. And that's where I'll head today. Going over to the north peak takes uh, probably another hour and a half. But I kind of just wander, want, I want to wander just a bit in that direction because the terrain gets really cool. Looks like I made it to home for the night. A drama at the hut I'll get back into that in a minute but um, this section right here you can see this trail is kind of on the edge of here and then it just falls off into the valley when I did come out here in the summer one time uh, I was coming off the summit walking back and it was at this point where it was already dark and I thought I'd forgotten my headlamp, but it was actually buried in the bottom of my bag. 
I later learned. So I was walking in the dark. My friend was ahead of me and I was just kind of following her and her light. And I had my tripod over my shoulder with a basically brand new 5D and uh, I think it was 2870. It might have been a bit 24, but anyways, it was a brand new lens and new body. And uh, it was on my shoulder because as you can see, it's pretty epic. Like from that summit, walking all the way down, there's another summit there. And so basically the whole time I was just shooting the whole way down, constantly stopping. It took forever to get back to camp. And at one point over here, I said to my friend, uh, I think I lost my camera because I was walking and I didn't notice it, but uh, my tripod felt extra light. And, um, and sure enough, when I stopped to look at the tripod and the camera, there was no camera on top. And I was freaking out. It was, uh, you know, I, I can't remember what it cost at the time, but that was probably $4,000 worth of gear that was potentially down here, rolling down the mountain. And I caught up to my friend and I just told her, uh, hey, I have to start hiking back up to see if I can find my camera. She didn't really know what was going on because we were tired, it was dark, end of the day kind of thing. And, uh, and I turned around to start walking back and she says, don't move. Like she just, you know, it was clear not to move. And then she walked up to me and was like, is this, is this it? And I was like, yeah. And it had fallen off the tripod, but it was just sitting on the top of the backpack. Anyway, it's just a small story, but there's a little lesson buried in there. When you're doing the cool tripod over the shoulder and walking out of the mountains, your tripod uh, plate and the screw, whatever is holding it connected, is slowly loosening up. Kind of feel like this angle deserves a selfie so i'm going to quickly do one of those can't get too into it though because i don't have too much time oh looky looky what is it I don't know, I don't see a name. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll check in at the hut to see if this is anyone's, but um, you might have noticed I don't have a hood on my uh, 24 to 70. I need one. But now I'll check in at the hut to see who's, who's this is, but it is filthy. So either it rolled down the mountain for a bit or it's been out here for a while. One other thing I should check when I'm out here at this point, if I do shoot here, is I should get into my photo pills app and just check what time the sun's actually gonna set. Cause right where my phone is, right behind there at 7.06, the sun's gonna be setting. And it's currently 4.30 right now. So I'm gonna gear down on the hiking pace because I got some time to kill.
Okay, that was a sketchy moment. Drone. I was doing one of those uh, circuit, uh, what do you call them? The shots with this kind of helicopter around the subject. Ah, I started too low and it caught the bush. Fell down here. Thankfully it was just on this shelf here. But God damn it. We don't need that. We don't need that. So this is a kind of a good reason to have that dual access document pocket. So when I grabbed the controller, I was accessing through the rear, but now that I've crashed my drone in a panic and put it away, my hands are still shaking from the rescue. Uh, I can just throw it in through the top and it ends up in the same pocket. Just about at the summit, kind of looks like all the clouds ripping up from the valley and about to take over. So I'm just going to get a quick look up here, kind of see where I'm at. Wow. I'm a little worried about this cloud. Yeah, I'd really like to get a cool shot over here facing the North Peak. It's not really uh, giving me what I want, but maybe we'll just linger a bit and see what happens. So, I'm gonna make an executive decision here and I'm gonna head down a little bit and hopefully I get some better moments down there. So I'm going through my photos yeah, nothing too spectacular. Well, I didn't really expect this to be what I was going to be shooting at, but it seems to be the only place the light's kind of playing around. So I'm going to take a few photos here. Well, I might, you might be able to hear it's definitely raining by now, but look at the light. Wow. So it's headlamp time. So, I got really lucky. Well, I have my bento as expected anyways, but I got my bento, I got some bread, and I got some rice crackers. And I got two tall boys. When you go to the factories in China, you eat a lot of peanuts with chopsticks. Really good for your chopstick skills. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving here. Just wanted to get a picture of the hut. It's a little too misty right now. 
but we'll see. We'll see. I've been uh, running around trying to get some photos. I mean, last time I checked in, I was pretty far back there. The light's been kind of strained. It's been nice light, but it just hasn't been amazing. Uh, just on this side of the ridge, it's just, it feels like there's a spotlight right there and there's really no definition. The sun, when it, once it rose, just was blowing out everything. But, you know, still some nice views here, of course, as you can see kind of slowed down the pace a bit just kind of waiting for this lady down here and I'm gonna take a nice photo of her I hope it's taken her like 10 minutes just to get there because I think she's like just looking at all the flowers and stuff so we'll see I think this is the last uh, summit of my trip this is uh, Jigitake I think this is called South Peak uh, basically, I'm gonna head down this ridge here and you can see the hut over there maybe and I'll go hit a left there Just drop into this valley and eventually If you can see it way down there at the end of my fingertip is a parking lot and I'm about half a kilometer before that parking lot uh, It's a much smaller roadside one. I had kind of hoped I could stop in and get a pizza at the little pizza shop there, but it's only six o'clock in the morning, so probably not open. Hey, So the good news is I scored a deal because the drinks are past due. I'll take that. Instead of 400 yen, they were 300 yen. So I saved 200 yen buying two bottles. So if you're unfamiliar with the tripod water bottle pouch, just drop it in, put your finger through the little uh, hole here, squeeze down on the flat side, just like that, and it's locked. Now, at the time you're watching this video, this travel pouch product might not be available yet, but it will be in October 21. It's designed to put face masks in, but also other items. You can see I got a bar lock there, got my earplugs from last night. A couple band-aids, some instant coffee, you can got a battery, some lip balm, toothbrush, those kind of things. Now when you're on hikes like this, you're probably not using your laptop sleeve. So you can just slide it in just like this. And you can see here that if you just put it up around the top, the zipper access will be nice and convenient for you. Before I head down, I'm just going to do a quick run through of what's actually in my bag on this trip. I did change it up from uh, the episode I filmed previous. Uh, I switched out a lens and a couple other items, but for starters, let's just work the outside. We've got a thousand milliliter bottle of liquids. Front panel pocket, we have a shell. Also got a lightweight down jacket. Didn't actually use that on this trip. I've got one bar left, but I had a total of four bars. And I had a bunch of uh, small salt tablets, which I think I f finished all of those. 
on this side I was carrying the tripod which uh, is supporting the camera right now and in the top pocket I have another GoPro I have all my extra clothes that I had some of them I wore up here and I've changed changed them out basically there's a pair of shorts in here another shirt some socks and underwear headlamp came in handy this morning uh, otherwise that's it in the top compartment and in the side pocket I do have a polarizing filter front pocket got my mobile phone and in this side I've got another snack bar and I've got my wallet now, in the rear access, I have a small mirrorless core unit, got a GoPro case, there's a couple of remotes under here right now, two of them, and then I just put the case on top. I just put my other accessories in here, I've got a couple of chargers, both of these are dead now but they managed to charge both GoPros uh, one and a half times, and my mobile phone about 50%. Got a A7 with a 24 to 70. Got my Mavic Mini, which hopefully is still in working order. Then I have a 16 to 35. Now you can see here in the document pocket, I have a controller for the drone, and I have two drone batteries, which I did not get a chance to use. As I just mentioned, I have my uh, travel pouch here, but I also have a shade for my mobile phone when I'm flying my drone. I didn't get to use it on this trip, but uh, yeah, sometimes when the light's really harsh, uh, this comes in handy. Overall, I think it's pretty fair to say it's a pretty modest load, but you saw what I got up to. Uh, yesterday was over nine hours. Today is probably gonna be, I don't know, probably be about four to five hours down. Uh, I'm probably halfway down though already. You know, it was a good trip, had the luxury of food at the lodge I knew that was going to be there and honestly if that wasn't an option I would not be packing an E25 I'd be grabbing uh, at least a 30 most likely a 35 or I'd be jumping into the Action X range and considering uh, X50 It'd really depend on how much food I would need to bring so I hope that gives you a good perspective uh, for some uses for yourself for the E25. If you're doing overnighters and you have the, the luxury of support via a hut, uh, it's a great bag for that. Otherwise, I think you should definitely consider moving upwards if you need to be self-supported. So I'm gonna pack up the rest of this and I'm gonna start heading back down and I will uh, either check in again or I'll see you at the truck. Genome of typewriter keys. A simple thought brings you to me, and I'm thankful every day. I'm so glad I found you the old fashioned way. 